All right, all right. So we're well into 2024 now, and I'm finally getting this video out. But uh, I'd have to say um, I was looking back at 2023, and I mean there was a, a lot of developments made. There was a lot of milestones, and the bar was definitely raised, right? Uh, especially in in like the the hobbyist and uh, kit, you know, side market of it, and you know, splitting them into two here, there's the hobbyist kit and then there's the industrial side. There's a whole middle section there, but we'll get into that later. And, but at least, you know, from, from what we've seen in the printers coming out, there was a lot of major breakthroughs. Um, and, well, let's take a look real quick. Let's take a look back at 2023. So there were some 3D printers out there that really made some huge strides, right? Um, mainly when you, when you take a look at Bamboo Lab, um, they came out with, uh, with the X1 Carbon uh, and later with the P1 series, and they just took the market by storm, right? I mean, you look at these printers and they're, uh, they're Core XY, they're super fast, it has, you know, help with the X1 anyway, it has the LiDAR and uh, all the automatic calibration. I mean, you just, let it do its thing and you're printing within 15 minutes out of the box um, but they they just print well right and they really really raise the bar and actually there's uh, an, in a course you know a lot of companies followed suit and when you look at some of the printers out there now from like the Creality the K1 um, there was KD Tech came out with one uh, Flash Forge and there was a I'm sure there's two, three, four others out there that I'm, you know, that I'm uh, drawing a blank on right now. But these companies are coming out with very similar printers. You know, they're the Core XYs. Uh, they're really fast. They're enclosed. I mean, and uh, some have larger form factors like uh, uh, the K1 Max now. And Kitty Tech, one of their models is is pretty huge. You know, larger than what Bamboo Lab has. But uh, that being said, I mean, I'd, I'd have to say, you know, 2023 was, uh, I guess it's the year of the speed printer, right? <laughs> it's, uh, they, uh, they really, really raised the bar on that. And now they also came out with, uh, with their AMS, right? So now you can hold, it holds what, four spools and you can daisy chain them for, you know, up to four of them. So you'd have 16 colors, you know, you can print. Uh, multiple print, multiple color printing uh, with ease. Uh, now that has some quirks about it, about uh, the amount of waste on their uh, on the filament poop as it, you know, switches from from spool to spool. It seems like there was a lot of it coming out, and in some cases, when you're doing a lot of colors on every layer as it keeps building up. All of a sudden you look back and there's there's more waste than there is put into the actual part but you know there's you can make adjustments to it and all that good stuff but that was a, a pretty major product in itself right that came out with the x1 carbon and <clears throat> and at this point uh, I know I can think of a couple of different companies that are coming out with their own version uh, I think one has four spools and one up to seven, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But I don't think they've hit the market yet. Uh, if not, I think they're going to be pretty soon this year. But, uh, yeah, so I just have to say that was a, a pretty major breakthrough. Now, a lot of these printers, they're, they're made to, they're, they're touting that, uh, you know, that you can be printing within 15 minutes out of the box. They just take it out, you know, do all the prep work or whatever, taking off safety tabs and links and whatnot, and, uh, and you're printing. Now, this plug-and-play printing type like this, it's, uh, it's attracting a huge, a huge market of guys of, or, and girls, you know, uh, uh, that just want to print, right? They, they don't want to... Uh, uh, get it in kit form, they don't want to have to build it, they don't want to have to uh, manually calibrate or manually upgrade, manually add this and that, you know, they don't want to, they don't want to work on the printer. They want to concentrate on, uh, on, on actual printing something. They, they, they're, they're, uh, 
they're focused on the design of their object, right? Not, not on the machine. Um, now, I, from years back, I actually enjoyed that. I mean, that, that was, I can see, you know, that was a hobby. And it was a little side note for me. I've been dealing with them for years and years and years. I think I got my first kit, what was it, in 2005 or so? Um, somewhere in there. But uh, but I, I liked it. I mean, I, I like getting out there and... Uh, uh, and and doing upgrades and, and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, I even, you know, built one myself after, you know, uh, after all the years, but that's a different story. And, but then again, um, but I'm, I'm a mechanical engineer, you know, 30 plus years and it's, it's in my blood. So I like it. Uh, but there's a lot of other guys out there uh, that, that don't want to go in that direction they want to like i said they just want they just want it to work right uh and that's kind of uh the same thing on the industrial side when you get a, an industrial printer you know it just has to work you you can't spend time uh repairing it or having to go through upgrades you know this and that and just with routine maintenance you know just like any any, any other machine tool you just have to you have to have it working to make it cost uh, effective, right? And now they're doing it with uh, the hobbyist side. But I guess after uh, you know looking at 2023 um, with the major breakthroughs, it'll be interesting to see what's going to happen in, in 2024, right? And what was kind of interesting, um, if you if you ever pay attention to the Consumer Electronics Show, uh, this year there was only a handful of 3D printers that, that showed up, uh, the companies, right? Uh, there wasn't that many uh, at the Consumer Electronics Show, which is, you know, is huge, of course. But I guess the short list, I have a list here. There's a short list of uh, some of the companies that were there and form labs i think they had one of the bigger booths out there um, showing their products there was a uh, gufu uh printers which i've never heard of maybe there's not in the u.s market you know maybe they're in china and asia and maybe in europe you know who knows but it looks like they had uh, a whole range from from small you know up to industrial side uh size printers and there was a uh, Kokoni, um, and it looks like you know they most of their products they seem like the real small beginner entry level printers, you know, something that you'd want a kid to learn on, right? And but they also have a Kickstarter out there, and it's for a fast speed printer, it's an inverted design saying that, uh, uh it's not a resin but it's it's upside down and it's printing on the bottom right it's an inverted uh, design and they had their own version of a seven color you know for seven color spool holding for printing and from what i understand that you know it was just there it wasn't working at the time and the the inverted design you know i've heard of that in the past from some guy developing it and whatnot but i is there really um, a demand for that? How, how popular is that inverted demand going to be? Because I really, I'd have to see it because I, I don't see the, uh, the benefit of having it upside down and printing that way. Um, but we'll see. Hopefully we'll hit the market and, uh, and we'll see if it's going to be a, a big breakthrough, you know, but, uh, uh, and of course, you know, moving on, there was, a. Uh, that was just my opinion, but uh, there was a uh, uh, Creality was there, and they had their their Sir, Sir Moon D3 Pro, um, and I think that was a dual extruder on it. Um, they had the new K1 series, I believe it was the K1 Max, and a K1 Max and uh, a K1 Carbon, I believe. Um, 
and then they had a new Ender 3, another Ender 3, V3 or something. So, so actually there was nothing really, really huge. It was nothing that was really groundbreaking technology shown at the CES in very few companies. But, you know, it makes you wonder why, why was such a big change or lack of change at the CES. Now, I read an article that was actually blaming the CES um, for the lack of the 3D printers. <laughs> Let's see, they were saying that the CES, it, it was not worth going to. Um, and here's some quotes here. Uh, so the, the decrease in 3D printing exhibitors does not seem to reflect trends in the industry. According to a recent report from market intelligence firm Context, so this guy is, um, he's referencing this info from Context, which looks pretty legit. Uh, <laughs> from the market intelligence firm Context, Q2 of 2023 saw a 12% unit shipment increase and a 22% year over year system revenue growth in the personal and kit and hobby 3D printers. And this growth has been driven by the emergence of desktop 3D printers, uh, manufacturers like Anchor Make and Bamboo Lab, which the latter taking the personal 3D market by storm, according to context. Well, the first thing, first thing to note that they're, they're quoting this stuff from context, but this was Q2 of 2023. So it, it doesn't even cover the rest of the year. Uh, and and keep in mind at that time that 2023, you know, they, they had a lot more uh, exhibitors back then. But just look at, you know, their, their data is not up to date. And yeah, so I, I, I want to see the numbers for, for the rest of 2023. And I'm sure um, those numbers are probably grown and they did great compared to 2022, right? You know, the year over year. Uh, but he goes on to say, let's see. The expo has drawn criticism from within the tech industry and is sometimes characterized as gimmicky. Uh, the fact that the CES 2024 is held in Las Vegas does little to foster an image of a serious industry and application focused technology expo. What do you, I, I totally disagree with that. What is he saying that it, Las Vegas does little to foster an image of a serious industry? Are you kidding? The CES is the largest, one of the largest trade shows in the world, if not the largest. Um, it's been going on for years and years and years and years, right? Therefore, the limited 3D printing presence is a reflection on CES itself, suggesting that exposure on the show floor doesn't justify the exhibiting fees. I just can't believe he said that. The limited 3D printing presence is a reflection on CES itself. Yeah, that's that's unbelievable. <laughs> I'd have to say that the CES is a great place uh, to showcase new technologies. That's what it's there for, right? And I don't see how he focused on the 3D printing industry being you know, the, are they the only ones that are, is everybody starting to pull out of the CES? I don't think so. It is huge. Well, all right, all right. So how many of you guys out there um, go to the CES, the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas, either go to it or follow it, or you just like to see all the, the latest and greatest gadgets and toys and uh, just all the new technologies that are out there? Um, well, that's what the Consumer Electronics Show does. It's held out in Vegas every year, um, in January, actually. And it's one of the biggest trade shows in the world, right? I mean, it just, I forget how many square miles or whatever, <laughs> however they rate it. It's just about in, in every uh, 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 venue out there. I um, mean, you could, you could be there for a week and still not see everything, right? It's one of those things. Um, and business-wise, it's something that if you if you have something, you, you go out there, a lot of companies do this, and you know, going to this one show could set you up for the rest of the year, right? Um, 
a lot of times it's it's an opportunity if you want to partner with somebody you want to showcase your new invention or uh, you're trying to get some investments in some badly needed investments to continue your project uh, or launch your company whatever it is I mean you can do it all there right so and actually actually in the past um, you now this was back uh, 2005 2006 2007 that's back when I was doing product development in uh, in the electronics industry and uh, in consumer electronics and and a bunch of other stuff but but I came out with some you know patented products I came out uh, submitted in and actually started winning some innovation awards right I won in 2005 um, 2006 and 2007 and that includes uh, the best of innovations in uh, in 2006 so I had a blast out there and yes I still follow the CES one of these days I'm gonna go back I haven't been back in a long time if you ever get the chance it's a good time it's a it's a it's a good time to be at the CES right or in Vegas right I guess when you're looking and why why is there such a lack of printers at the CES and in my opinion I just don't think there's going to be some major breakthroughs uh, presented in 2024 2023 was a huge year and I think 2024 uh, is just going to be uh, taking the technologies and, and maturing them right and I don't think there's going to be any major major you know breakthroughs like Bamboo Lab did in 2023 I don't think anybody's going to come out with anything like that in 2024 now we'll see a lot of uh, new models coming out of course uh, a lot of new printers and that's just because these companies are fulfilling their product roadmaps right stuff that has been planned for five years running <laughs> and and while they you know hopefully it's not going to be a lot like uh, I guess Creality they they keep coming out I mean how many how many Ender 3's are there now you know they're they have so many different versions of it and year over year I don't know how many they introduce but uh, anything groundbreaking yet yeah you know that's, that's questionable um, it'll be interesting to see what bamboo lab has coming out uh, in because I think they're calling it their new flagship printer for 2024 and it's coming out in early February so it'll be interesting to see what what they come up with um, and just like with cameras, uh, 3D printing and additive manufacturing, they have their own uh, industry-specific trade shows. It's like the Form Next, right? Um, and at Form Next, they have, you know, both industrial, used to be mainly industrial, if I'm not mistaken, and then a lot of, uh, you know, some of the, the larger uh, consumer brands. And... I did not go to it, but I'm curious now. It's like, well, because it, it was just a few months ago, right? When they had the, the form next. And was there any groundbreaking technology shown there either? Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so I just think the hobby aside is it's, it'll grow somewhat, but not like it did in 2023. So on the other hand, let's take a look at, uh, at the other side. Uh, and I say other side, let's take a look at the industrial side of additive manufacturing. So there are a lot of the major manufacturers, you know, in, in different industries and in automotive aircraft and, you know, some of the big guys and they're, they're adopting additive manufacturing and 3d printing. Uh, but I don't think it was at as fast a rate, um, as was hoping for, you know, from, from these, uh, printer manufacturers. Um, there's a lot of manufacturers out there that are, that are out there putting, you know, pumping out a lot of, uh, printers, a lot of equipment, and they're trying to do all this, you know, proprietary printers and proprietary, you know, filaments and, and really, really, um, jockeying for position. Right. And, uh, but I don't think it was happening as fast as they were wanting if you look at their stock prices you know they're just whew, a lot of them even some of the bigger guys uh, the well-known guys they're 
their stock has been tanking. Um, and uh, some of these companies, there's quite a, quite a few of them now. Uh, and what we saw, I guess it was around March of 2023, uh, there were uh, four, four that, that comes to mind, you know, when they're jockeying for position and they're starting to try to, to acquire each other, you know, try to consolidate. And they're just bouncing back and forth, and uh, and nothing nothing's happened. You know, in one, I guess in one point it was uh, uh, the board of directors, and they were really trying to get their investors going. Yeah, let's 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 acquire this company. It's the thing to do. But the investors said no way. You know, they they voted against it. You know, uh, so it didn't happen. And then, and well. Uh, I guess some of them, let's see, Nano Dimensions, one of them. And I think, uh, well, let's see, Nano Dimension, there was Stratasys, everybody's heard of them. They've, they've been involved in this. Uh, Desktop Metal and 3D Systems. And at one point, I think it was Stratasys trying to buy out Desktop Material and it was nixed. Now Nano Dimensions trying to, trying to buy out Stratasys. Uh, it's just going and bouncing around, right? And if you ask me, some of these companies, um, they, they, they went public, you know, using the, the SPAC, the SPAC, that Special Purpose Acquisition Company. And when they do that and they, mer you know, merge with them, um, it just speeds up the IPO process, right? Instead of having to go through all, all the added paperwork and, and whatnot, well, they're able to uh, join forces and they're public, you know, almost right away. And if you ask me, I don't think uh, a lot of these companies probably would have been better off if they didn't go public so soon, because now they're under the radar. They, they're having to please, please Wall Street and they're having to please investors on a quarterly basis, right? Um, they look at it quarterly, year over year, and they just really put you through, through the ringer. Um, so now these companies are, are really focused on the short term, not the long term. And they started pumping out printers like mad, trying to, you know, like I said, jockeying for position and get some sales going. Well, the revenue was down and they were just pumping out these machines, um, but nothing was happening, right? So I think that's something that's gonna happen uh, in 2024. Um, We'll probably see a lot more industry uh, consolidation going on because there's a lot of it going on now. Uh, when you start looking through the news, if you start following, like I said, between those four, uh, there's there's been a ton of other merger acquisitions, um, and even Stratasys. I think it was. Uh, oh, what did they do? They sold off a section. Um, let's see. Let me take a look here. Yeah, uh, so Stratasys, uh, I thought it was an interesting move, but they, they sold, they had a Texas-based metal printing service, a fairly large one, and they sold it off. I, I forget the name of the, of the, the company they sold it to, uh, but on that service size, they, they sold it off, and I guess they're just going to concentrate on, on printers, on, on equipment, and making and selling equipment. Um, yeah, so there's there's going to be some interesting moves coming up in 2024, um, and hopefully, hopefully some of them will start going towards you know industry standards and and open source instead of all this proprietary stuff, because that's just going to slow down progress if you ask me. There's a lot of standard software uh, even on the on the machining side. If you look at CNC milling and everything, um, you know, sure there's there's a lot of software out there that you can. Uh, standardize on within your company and there it's well-known software uh, there's nothing proprietary about um, a lot of the stuff they use I mean it's I think that's what needs to happen instead of uh, so much proprietary stuff coming out is when you think about it it's like uh, some of these major manufacturers in the industry if they're adopting a lot of this machinery it was slow because why would why would they just go out and dump hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars on new equipment when 
when technology is still moving fast, they're changing the, uh, I guess they're changing some of their technology to, uh, to stay a step ahead of each other. Well, if it's moving that fast, how quick are those machines and printers going to be obsolete uh, within a few years? I mean, are these big manufacturers, if they adopt all this machinery, are they going to see a return on their investment, an ROI, before that machine goes obsolete, right? And I guess an example is in the dental stuff, right? I've seen some company that, uh, and it's a great business. I mean, when you start looking at the, the stuff they're doing, as far as, you know, with the, you know, uh, bridges and whatnot, you know, all the stuff they're, you know, it's really helping the dental industry. Um, and I started looking into it myself, but I started looking at some of the equipment and a lot of the filament was, um, how do you say, I guess it has to be approved by the FDA, you know, so everybody in that, they're, they're focusing on, you know, proprietary uh, filament again. And some of their machines, um, I guess their first and second generation were adopted in, in, in the dental arena and all of a sudden they come out with this third generation and everything else went obsolete. Now they're going to have to, you know, uh, come back and reinvest in all these printers and to use this new filament that's supposed to be badass, right? Uh, well, that's, that's what's happening. It's like, man, it, it ends up being a very, very capital intensive, you know, investment. Uh, that you're going to really, really have to uh, see a return on the investment before you make, you know, the decision. And so hopefully that's going to catch up. I mean, a lot of these uh, printer and machine uh, manufacturers, they really need to concentrate on, instead of not just their own profitability and uh, quarter quarterly revenues and year-over-year -year performance, they really need to look at their customers and figure out, okay, what can we do to offer them this equipment so that they will have an ROI and, uh, and a sustainable, economically sustainable solutions, right? And then uh, on top of that, you know, the same for themselves. But, but that's my opinion. I mean, <laughs> but just, it's interesting to follow and see what's, what's going on in the, on the industrial side. Yeah, so I think there's gonna be a, uh, a lot more of this consolidating going through in 2024. So we'll see a lot of these companies continue with their merger acquisition uh, talks and, you know, uh, hostile takeovers or whatever you want to call it. But uh, I think we'll see a lot more of that coming up in 2024. And that being said, um, another change I think is going to happen is uh, between like I'm saying that there's the hobbyist side, hobbyist side uh, and there's the industrial side. And this whole middle section, it could be the prosumer or the maker or, you know, there's this whole middle ground. Um, and I think that's, that needs to be taken, fo you know, some focus on. I think uh, a lot of these hobbyist machines, they're they're moving along and they're starting to, uh, to, to hit that prosumer side, they're really, really high end, but they're still desktop. You know, they, they, they still take up a smaller footprint than, uh, than the industrial side. And they've come out with a lot of new technologies and, and these things like the bamboo lab is another, you know, uh, example again, uh, that you really, really get some really good quality prints and you can use a lot of the latest, uh, engineered filaments that are out there. Um, and on the other side, the industrial machines, instead of making these huge, huge machines all the time, I think a few companies need to, to focus down and scale it down to that smaller footprint arena, uh, more of a desktop or office machine, um, and going towards that same level. Maybe not, maybe not having overlapping, but but somewhere in there where they're they're hitting the prosumer level, you know, the the smaller industrial, and I think that would be a big hit, a huge hit. 
Um, and I think once all these uh, additive manufacturing with metals, if they can get it all that down to that prosumer level, that prosumer side, so that you don't have such a huge footprint, but you're still able to do metals, oh, that would be huge. I mean, I mean, after all, all these, you know, PLAs and PETGs, you know, all the, uh, and even the nylons, the carbon fiber nylons, well, how much more filament really can you use? Um, there are a lot of products that are starting to be made uh, specifically, you know, from 3D, you know, using these uh, uh, filaments and stuff. And I do the same. I, I have a couple of products that, uh, uh, that I print off myself, quite a few products actually. Um, but man, if I could do that with metal, uh, that would open so many doors for me as, uh, you know, with a job shop. But just think about all these other larger manufacturers. They would be, you know, taking them left and right. But so I think that's that's a market that we'll probably see a focus on. Uh, and even with CNC uh, mills and CNC routers, you already you already see uh, those smaller footprint stuff. Some of them are crap, you know, I have to say. But I've seen uh, a couple of companies that are reaching that mid level. And I was like, ooh, that's that's the sweet spot. And uh, but that's just my opinion again. But uh, there's a few other changes I think is going to happen. Well, let's see. Let me take a look at my notes. Yeah, and I guess I'd like to say something about uh, some of the uh, the larger companies that are they're offering their services like uh, uh, Zometry um, is a great example. Um, and you can go and, and apply and be one of their manufacturers, you know, one of the vendors. But with them, with 3D printing, uh, and this, this is just an example, not all, not all of them do this, but Zometry, they, they have a list of printers. If you don't have this printer, then you're not gonna get any business, right? And that's a bad move because I've seen their list and it's like they are not keeping up with the latest and greatest stuff. Um, there's a lot of other printers that can do the same. Um, and unless you're investing a hundred thousand plus in these machines, you're, you're, you can't be a partner with them. Well, you're, you know, keeping a lot of business out from a lot of small and medium manufacturers because of that. And they need to step it up and keep track of, uh, uh, of the latest and greatest printers and for qualification and uh, certification purposes, you know, for the, uh, for their potential manufacturers, right? And, and on the other side, if these companies don't do some kind of uh, qualification or certification uh, so that you could be one of their partner manufacturers, well, you have a lot of guys out there that are, it's just a hobby for them, right? They're really inexperienced. They're, they might not be engineers, um, but they have a badass printer, right? So, you know, you, you gotta, uh, gotta look at it that way too. I mean, they're protecting themselves and, and whatnot, but, um, so I think there's going to be a, a lot of, uh, um, I guess it boils down to, there's going to be a lot of training going on. Um, if you're keeping it as a hobby and you're making little lamps and, you know, little toys and stuff, well, that's fine. You know, I hope, I hope you enjoy it and good luck to you. You know, it's a lot of fun. Um, but if you're going to step up and try to make prototypes or short run production or anything for anybody, make sure, uh, that you educate yourself and there are ways to, uh, to take some classes and get certified for this and that, uh, go that direction. So I think there's going to be a, a boom in the education uh, field for, you know, both CAD stuff and additive manufacturing. Yeah, so I think we'll see some interesting changes in 2024. Uh, I just picked some highlights um, of what I think is going to happen, and and whether I'm right or wrong, this, this is all my opinion. The way I'm looking forward, but. Uh, uh, whichever way it goes, I mean, 2024 is, is going to be great. I think 2024 is going to be a great year. And, uh, and that being said, I guess that is it for this video.
So, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and watch for my next video.